Good morning everyone and welcome to part three. It's Wednesday the 24th of May and I am at Windhaven site at Dunnet on the Dunnet Peninsula. So uh, right yeah it's a nice morning for it as you can see sunglasses are on the German guy behind me he's just been filming the seals down below my camera's not good enough to be zooming in on them. But uh, I've just got the kettle boiling, so I'm not going to be away from the van for too long. And we'll be uh, starting making our way across the north coast, the very top of Scotland. I'm looking forward to uh, today and the days after it because we're going up to my favourite part, the west coast. The north coast is really good as well. Don't want to be sound like we're rubbish in the east coast because it is good, but <clears throat> it's not much different than anywhere else if you know what I mean. But that that north coast and west coast especially are amazing. And as you can see, we're just at the top of the north coast now. So it's pretty decent surroundings. Right, we make this brew and then get the bacon on the go for a bit of a feed because I am starving. Got the smoky bacon on the go. Won't be long till it's ready. It's a bit thin. I prefer the thick bacon like we sell, but it'll still fill a hole. I'll just have to put plenty on my sandwich. Yeah, not bad that. And we have three or four of them. Use up all them 10 rashers. So that's my night at Windhaven site over. I'll be heading along the north coast now. It might be windy, but I've had to pull in and get these hairy coos on film. I've seen a few already, but I thought I'd not got any on the video yet for anybody to see them. So there they are, if you can hear me above this wind. I don't know if you can tell on this video, but look how rough the sea is. It's really windy out there and it's coming from the direction that I'm heading over at the west. So we're just coming through Castletown now. It's only a few miles further down the road where I've just left. I've just been next to the coast and the van is constantly being pushed to the left. The wind is really strong. I mean, you can see the trees even blowing about in this village. And you've got buildings sheltering them. Could be a slow drive across the top, but I'm not in no rush. Just uh, want to take it all in and enjoy the scenery and enjoy the drive. This is a good long stretch of road between Castletown and Furso, or as the locals say, Furzo. Pronounce it with a Z. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong again. You have to let me know in the comments. Is it Furso or Furzo? We're still going down this road the A836, I ain't it a bend yet for about four miles, it's just been constantly straight, which is unusual for roads in the UK, especially country roads. Although we are coming up to a bend now. Just coming into Thurso, Thurso. In Thurso now, back on the A9. Just making my way through it normal weekday so it's pretty busy. Days anyway, losing track. 
Wednesday. I think this place is the biggest northern settlement in mainland UK. In fact, it'd have to be, really. John O'Groats. Not that big. Some of the other places we're going to be going through across the top, but are probably slightly further south than this is. Where will we be going? Tong, Betty Hill, Durness. Yeah, I think this place is the biggest northern settlement in the UK. It's got a population of about 8,000. So it's not overly big, but for Highlands it is. Right, so we're now back in Sutherland. Over from Cape I've got out uh, because I need to give my wonder a clean. I've been trying to film some stuff for you, but then I've watched it back just before I've started recording this. And it's too, too dirty, the window is. If I just pull in, get a quick wipe. I'll spin you around, it's quite nice around here actually. We're not far from Melvich. Some real strong winds though. Felt like I was on a, a ferry driving across the top bit, how it will rock me about. Motorhome on its way by. So yeah, I'm gonna give my window a clean. I'll try and record some bits, but if I don't, you'll just catch up with me at the next point of interest. It's not all about just seeing what's on the road anyway, is it? So I've come along to Straffy Point now. There's a lighthouse in the distance. I am gonna have a walk across to it soon. I won't be taking it with me though because how windy it is, you're not going to hear a thing at all. This van is rocking about like something not right. It's not as bad as it was when I was at Muller Galloway. Nothing will ever be as bad as that, but it's blowing well. Rocking it about. But, uh, right, this is where we've come along. I would say there's John O'Groats, Duncan's Beard. Done it, Ed. That site I stayed at was just north of Bruff. So I've come along here this morning. Along that A836. Melvich. Strathy. And we are there right now. Strathy Point. So I'm going to get out, have a walk across to it, and we'll be moving along. Just looking at this though, the map, daughter's boyfriend, a while back, he said to me, you can read a map? I was like, yeah, of course I can, dude. All right. Just makes you think though, some folk these days, they're reliant on sat-navs, whereas I've got, got both like, you know, got the sat-nav, I also keep a hard copy with me in case that sat nav plays up. I can remember years ago when you were going somewhere, you'd get little post it notes and write down the names of the roads you were going on and stick it on your dashboard. To be honest with you, I've got lazy with a sat nav as well. Often forget to pull off at places. So, right, yeah, we're going to go out and brave this wind. Right, I'm back from a very windswept Straffy Point lighthouse. I'm going to start moving on again towards Betty Hill and Tong, and then across to Durness. I'm a bit concerned about recording while I'm outdoors because, as you've seen on that previous clip, when I'm recording anything, you can't hear in the slightest of what I'm saying or anything other than just horrible wind noise. 
I've given the window a good clean, so try and get a little bit of footage. As I'm traveling, I will explain where I'm going and of any points of interest again. So it's time to get back onto the main road and across towards Betty Hill and Tong. I'm just gonna sit still and quiet for a minute so you can see how much this van's rocking. gives you an idea with that sign on that fence. I'm sheltering behind the van just to show you the rugged coastline. So that's where we've come from over that way. now from Betty Hill. I don't know if you've watched it and I can't remember whether I included it on part one or part two of the previous videos where I mentioned about the forecast for the wind it was meant to be quite strong and it's getting real bad rocking this van side to side because as I've mentioned previously I've hardly got any weight in it and it's a high top so it thrashes it about side to side like now it's rocking it in fact, the wind can get that bad up here on this north coast. They even stop them camping in tents. It'll often say no tents allowed because it's that windy. It just blows them away. There's been people who's been stranded. It's ripped the tent completely out of the ground and they've had to retreat to the car for the night. It's not a bad idea though. A lot of people are getting into that car camping. I mentioned him on one of my previous videos when I was in the Peak District when I took the French Bulldog with me wondering where car camper he does it all over the place and he's a brilliant vlogger so if you've not seen him you know check him out he's a really good guy he interacts with viewers as well on his Facebook group in the comments on YouTube so yeah check him out wondering where because I need to get some milk. A selection of cakes and bits. Yeah, quite a nice little shop. I've pulled away from outside the shop. I'd left it on the main road while I grabbed my milk. So yeah, this is Betty Hill. Sign there is showing swimming pool down there. I've seen one or two posts on Facebook and park for night. A lot of the motorhomes will come here, use the swimming baths for the showers before parking up elsewhere. Toilets over there. There's a bit of an information sign as well, I'll show you in a minute. There's the Betty Hill Hotel. It's got the sign outside it, Route 500, obviously meaning the NC 500. World War One Memorial. The school over there. Obviously, I'm not going over there to record anything, so we'll stay up this end. And I'll just show you this information board for Betty Hill. Electric charging point as well. So that's it, some information on Betty Hill for anybody that's passing this way. If you need to read anything, you can just pause it. Right, we're heading on that way, towards the Tong. Right, I can't be long because I've just left it there. I've literally just drove 50 yards past that hotel. I meant to pull in though to show you this. Check out that. Look how rough the sea is though. 
windy, man. Turquoise coloured sea, though. So, yeah, that was Betty Hill. Destination Tong. That way. This is an oldie worldie bridge, ain't it? Nice views back though, back across. I'm not turning around because obviously I don't touch the camera whilst I'm driving. I've pulled into the most perfect spot for a brew. Wait till you check this out. Bit of me that. Check it out, look at that. And the wind's died down a little bit. Cold back here. And it's even got a bench for me to have my dinner on. So I'm gonna get cooking up some food and make a cup of tea. So I'm just pulling into Tong now. I've pulled over because I wanted to just double check something. I'm not doing it this time, but I'll probably never do the full NC500 again. I never say never, but if I do come up this way, I'm wanting to check out that road. A836. Apparently it's the most remote road in Britain. So it goes down to Leg, 37 miles away. There's loads of locks and mountains that's off it. So uh, I might do a kind of uh, vlog one time, vlogging that. Like vlogging the inner part of the NC500. Another uh, war memorial. A lot of them from the Highlands fought in both wars, as they did all over the UK. But yeah, that's the start of it then. The A836, a lot of it is single track lane with passing places. So I'm gonna head down into Tong now. Just purely for the vlog, if anybody's thinking of staying here, there's another Ben Loyal Hotel. Yes, in a minute, in a minute. Don't even say please. That's what my daughter once said to me years ago when she was little. He's a bit rude, isn't he, Dad? He don't even say please. And he's on again. Yeah, this is Tong anyway. Tong Police Station. carries on down there and I presume that's where you would start if you was hiking up Ben Loyal. There'll be various ascents to it though. Right, I'm gonna do as Mr. Satnav says, turn around, make a U-turn. We'll go down to the Kyles of Tong. Right, I'm stood behind this motorhome. Try and shelter from the wind, otherwise you're not gonna hear me. That's Ben Loyal in the distance. The tongue itself over there, where we've just been. I didn't mention it, did I? That couple, or should I say, where I've just had my food. Wind is the reason I was recording out at Straffy Point. It was too much. So we just. 
just winding around now, around to Durness. Just gonna pull over here actually. I missed this last time when we did this two years ago. The information board as well. When you approached Loch Erebol, did you notice the land getting lower and greener? This far corner of Scotland is an isolated patch of land on the lane by Durner's limestone, which is softer and more fertile than the other rocks around it. I don't know how well we can hear me, but that's some place over there, isn't it? I weren't sure how well you could hear me on that last part, so I've come round here again. That's where we've come down from, that road, and it was blowing an absolute coolie. So I was just saying, heading now round to Durness. Just waiting for some motorbikes to come by me. That's the sort of scenery you've got around here. Between like Erebol and Durness. Sure, we pulled up in this last time. Like the pro load of rocks and boulders in the way. Actually, they haven't blocked off that lay by. It weren't it. This is the one that we pulled in at last year, two years ago. Even. Yeah, the lock is enormous. We've come from right round over there, all the way over, right down to the bottom of there, and then back up this way. Then around this corner is Durness and Smoo Cave, and there was a zip line. I'm gonna see if that's there, show you that one. So that's where the zip line goes across. I've just noticed it's got a free fall jump as well now. The cliff jump is here. Rather you than me, you. Just coming into Durness now. It's only a couple of minutes back from where we've just left. Cattle grid, it's probably about the 30th one I've gone over today. So I've arrived at Smoo Cave now. It's not as windy because we're a little bit lower down. I know I keep going on about this wind, but it really is becoming a bit of a pain for when I'm recording. It's already spoiled it, I can't get the drone up. I'm going to spend about an hour around here though. So, um, I'm not going to be recording the whole lot, so don't worry, you're not going to be spending an hour around Smoo Cave. I'm just going to uh, record a bit of it and stretch my legs though. So I'll turn you around, I can show you what's what. So there's the car park for it, it says no overnight parking, which is understandable. They've got a tour that you can go inside the cave on the boats. Just looking at it now. Finished at four o'clock. Missed it by 20 minutes. To be honest with you, I weren't that bothered about going on it anyway. Right, let's get down them steps. So I'm down at the bottom just before the entrance. This was here the last time. Well, obviously, it looks like it's been here many years. Does anybody know what it is or what it was used for? If you do, leave a comment below, please. So there's the entry to the caves.
She's an absolute monster. I'm sure I've read it's the biggest sea cave in the entire British mainland. So what it is, is you go further into the caves and then there's like a waterfall. Well, not like a waterfall. There is a waterfall that's further inland. We've just drove the other side of that to come round to it and then park in a straight line. You'd be looking straight over there, car park is. I mean, there's some big caves in the Peak District, but I don't think I've come across any as big as this. It's absolutely enormous. Hold up, I've spotted a freebie. Free entry to waterfall. If that's the case, I'll have a bit of that. I always like a freebie, don't we all? In fact, I've seen this before. I can remember that. Yeah, that's a bit better shot of it. Without going on the boat trip, there's not really much else to be seen under here. But what I'm gonna do now, to save recording and how low this battery is, and because of the wind, I'm going up on this top on the right it's about a 25, 30 minute walk, and then go back round to the van. So I'll catch up with you back at the van, and then we'll decide where we're staying overnight tonight. On second thoughts though, if I've got to climb these steps, I think you guys ought to as well. Yeah, they're not too bad. I just didn't want to be recording up the top because I know how windy it's going to be. But yeah, just keep one last look at the cave. So the wind's already picking up. I'm up on the top, but as you've already know, it's blowing a gale. This is above where we've just been cave I was wondering what the reason for no drones was but it's become apparent it's to do with the nesting birds which is fair enough it's understandable that you know I'll add them up shame really but I want to be able to get mine up anyway because how windy it is there's been cases before where drones have been grabbed by eagles and they've vanished with them there's plenty of eagles in Scotland. So I'm back at the van now. Time is 17.17. 17. So nearly 20 past five. So yeah, just coming out of Durness now. Nice little walk that was around Smoo Cave. So catch up with you at where we're staying tonight. Well, I'm having to record again behind the van because of the wind. This is where I've come down to check out and uh, stay in tonight. But it's going to depend on two factors. One, if there's spacers. And two, if there's a phone signal, because I've got some editing to do. So I'm going to check it out. If there's spacers, if there's signal, we'll be staying. If not, I've got somewhere else. This place here is Kinloch Burvey. To be perfectly honest with you, 
I didn't know it was like this. It said it was a fishing village, but I thought it was like your scenic fishing village. It's an actual working fishing village, industrialized type place. This is only a small part of it, really. It goes further around that road, around there. So I'm just gonna go and check out Old Shore Moor, which is a bit further west. We're right off the beaten track now. Not a bad spot if they've got room and if they've got signal. At the moment I have, but I need a decent signal, at least three or four G. So this is where I've ended up. Old Shore Moor. Five pound donation. So I thought, for the sake of Fiverr, stay with like minded folk. So uh, I'm just going to go and check it all out around here. I'm going to have a walk over there soon. The only downside to this place is. I've got here and I've got no beer because I thought I was just going to be parking up somewhere near like a public road or something don't drink beer when I could get that tap on the window in the night it's unlikely I know but I don't bother don't want to risk it and people coming up here don't want to either drink drive limit is much lower in Scotland than it is in England 20 milligrams whereas in England it's 35 blow 34 in England you've got away with it blow 34 in Scotland you're not far off double the limit so that's just a little heads up for you in case you didn't know so uh, right I need to see the guy give him a quick fiver and I'm gonna go in and check it out down there well it's about two hours since you last seen me and as you can see, it's clouded over. It's dropped a little bit chilly, but not freezing. The wind's died down as well. I'm just gonna take you for a walk down to the beach. Let me just spin you around again. Welcome to Old Shawmore Beach. I think Britain's remotest beach is near here. In fact, it is. Sandwood Bay. We're here, Old Shawmore, Kinlock Burvey earlier, Old Shawmore. So you park for Sandwood around here and it's a four mile walk to the bay. This is the very northwest tip of mainland Britain that you can get to by car. In fact, I think just behind there is a slight, small road. That Sandwood Bay I was on about is around there, about four mile away. Massive beach, white sand. So I reckon it's time to call it a wrap now. It's nine o'clock, I've got some editing to do. We've had another good day at it. It's a shame I couldn't get the drone up, I'd have really liked that. But you can't have everything all the time, can you? And we're still in a stunning place like this, so thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you in the morning. Cheers.